Well, this is about the uh, Why History Month series. Why History Month color code people in the United States of America and around the world now. They call themselves white, white. Uh, yes, believe it or not, even Mr. Mark Miller, general of the United States of America, is color code. I mean, I don't say it, he said it. <laughs> you know, he said, he said, I am white, I am white, I am white. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about the uh, the whites and their history. Whites and the history. Let me let me tell you. Let me, let me put put it to you in perspective how actually it works. Uh, throughout millennia, we did not have this uh, uh, you know color code. This is something modern uh, created right here in the United States of America. Uh, and uh, through history, we have gangs. We have gangs and we have names. We have names like the Visigoth, the Romans, the Etruscans, the Lombards, and, and the Slavs, and all these gang, gang members, you know, identities. Uh, and uh, they battle each other for, for geography, basically. But they respected their identity. I'm going to give you a, a, an example of that. The Romans, they're, they're, they are the most successful of all. The Romans and the Hellens, they accepted others' strength. For example, the Roman adopted the Gladius Espada Española, the Spanish sword. So they adapted to the people that they conquer. They did not exterminate them. They accepted them and made them citizens of Rome. In the United States of America, we're doing the opposite. We have a general that he said that he reads, that he reads Karl Marx. Frederick Angel, um, Mr. Vladimir Lenin, Vladimir Ilyich, I cannot never pronounce it, Lenin. He read Fidel Castro's Mein Kampf, and he read all these general warfare uh, studies, <clears throat> but he failed to actually put it in practice like he eloquently say, because I read something, it doesn't make me change my way of uh, behaving. So that is basically what I'm talking about right here. I'm talking about how to change behavior. And in White, in White History Month, I'm going to explain to you that in some cases, our grandfathers were correct that you cannot recondition humanity. And I, I have to accept that to a point. And, and, and the general did it for me. The general actually, you know, made me realize that my grandfather was correct. And I was incorrect. And this, to me, this is an amazing time of uh, accepting that. You have to accept when you are erroneous. Something else that happened to me, I have a, uh, a co-worker that, uh, in my opinion, is an extremely intelligent man and uh, very, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, a very nice, nice fellow. He will give and do anything for you. And uh, he, he is so conditioned that I don't think anybody can recondition him. Uh, his biology is an Ivadian biology. He's uh, uh, an Ivadian, uh, born uh, right here in, uh, in California. And, uh, and he asked me 
where I was born. And I, I told him, you know, that I was born in the island of Cuba. And uh, of course, he's going to say, you know, you don't look like a Cuban. And the, uh, the regular stuff, you know, you don't look like a Cuban. You don't sound like a Cuban. Um, and uh, all these crazy and they always attach to, uh, to their already conditioned senses. And then he say something that, I mean, I just couldn't believe it. He say, my, uh, my grandfather, he, he, say, he was a wetback. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I say, oh, so your grandfather was a wetback. Oh, okay, okay, what is that, you know, wetback? And he say, oh, it come from Mexico. I say, oh, okay, okay. And so right away I ask him, you know, do you know who is Bernardo Conde de Galvez, because he too come from Mexico, and he is a founding father of the United States of America. Have you ever read about him? He said, no, no, I never, I never, you know, I never knew this man. I said, well, go to the Capitol building of the United States of America, and uh, you will see his image in the Capitol building of the United States of America, and you see this image in uh, Galveston County, Texas, where the city is named after him. And then I asked him, uh, have, you, have you been in the military, in the United States military? And he said, yes, I spent like 20 years in the military. That is why I am a mechanic, he meant he's a mechanic. And, uh, uh, I asked him, you went and fought for the United States of America and you have no idea that your grandfather and your family founded the United States of America? And he sort of like changed. He, he no longer wanted to talk about it. And that is how I know the people they do not want to get reconditioned. <clears throat> so some biologists, they do not want to accept change. They want to be what they already have been. They feel comfortable with that conditioning. So it is impossible to recondition them because the laws of learning, the law, the law of, of learning say that for a human or any any entity to learn, they first, first of all, they must want to learn. If you do not want to learn, it's impossible to anyone to teach you anything. So for example, that uh, general, they call himself White, in, in, the, uh, in a subcommittee uh, of the United States of America Congress, you cannot teach that man absolutely nothing. Uh, this uh, mechanic fellow, you cannot teach him absolutely nothing. They want to be what they are. Uh, you get a Taino Indian, that his name is uh, Jimenez. And, and you try to tell him, hey, listen, uh, somewhere along the line, your father, is one of the most amazing biologists on this planet. <clears throat> Jimenez, son of, of him. This is the people who conquer the Balearic Islands. This is, this is the, the people who their name is him the first or uh, Jaime Primero. Oh, uh, the, the, these these people are busy God. These people, these people destroyed the Roman Empire and created something new. And they came here to the Americas and they give you that name, but they don't want to even use it. They they change their names. That is how conditioning work. Conditioning work when a uh, a smarter guy uh, wanted to utilize you and assign you a sound and make any other sound around it to be weak, to look weak to you. So you accept it. And then you transfer that to the next generation and the next generation. 
and that is what is happening in the United States of America. We've been transferring this uh, idea of uh, Americans, Americans, for quite a while now. And the president of the United States of America, that guy is like a, uh, it's like if you put him in a music box and all that comes out of his mouth is American, American this and American that. That president, Mr. Biden, Joe Biden, that is a very conditioned man, completely conditioned. Can you teach him anything? No, no one can. He will never accept that he is not an American, that he is not an Englishman, that he is not an Irishman, that he is not white or any other freaking color. The same is the, uh, uh, the general. The same is the mechanic. So as, as, as you see, is from the bottom to the top, the conditioning is complete. And it doesn't matter how hard you try, unless that biology wants to learn where they, where they come from, wants to learn that the last name Jimenez is one of the strongest names on the planet. And there are so many because they are that successful. People believe that because there is so many people with the same name that make you inferior. It is the opposite. It makes you stronger. Because that means that the biology before you was able to, to, to propagate their biology at a higher rate than others. The son of Jimenez, the, son, the sons and daughters of Jaime, of him, they are second to none, the opposite. So when you, when you call yourself a caller, make sure that you understand that somebody is just is just controlling you controlling your biology controlling your mind when somebody call you white american and all this crap you see the true thing just happens they are conditioned themselves and they are followers like president joe biden and the general because yes they are in leadership positions but they are not really leaders they are followers. There is a difference in between a leader and a follower. No different than the primates. The primates will follow. And you see them in packs. And out of that pack, there is a few that lead the other pack. But they are never actually the leaders. They are followers. They follow the, 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 the first monkey, the biggest monkey. And the biggest monkey, apparently, is no Mr. Joe Biden. Somebody else is conditioning him. Somebody else is leading him. And in my opinions, are the industrialists, the people with the uh, with the money. That is that is you know how it works. So uh, there you have it. Uh, my experience of today. My grandfather. And his father before him, and all the way to Traiano, Justiciano, Adriano, Constantine, all the way to the Helens, Alexander, all the way to Charles the Third, that created the uh, the United States of America with Louis the Sixteenth. Those people understood the. When you get a biology that does not accept the learning, all you can do is just rule it. That is the technique that Hitler utilized. That is what man can say. Go and read it. I still think that we can change it, that we must change it. And I think uh, in a thousand years from now, 
we will somehow evolve where we can accept the learning easily, much easily, that we don't have to defend a color, an identity, because somebody else is assigning that to you to control you. So in a thousand years, maybe I will be correct. But today, my grandfather is. No one can recondition Mr. Joe Biden. No one can recondition Mr. Uh, uh, Mark Miller of the United States of America Army. Saludos.